Okay, I made the first little happy fox, and uh, I'm going to make another one. And uh, this is just a start, so I wanted to show you. First of all, you have to clean your metal. Make sure it's nice and uh, brushed so that you uh, can work with it, and uh, you'll have less problems with soldering and putting flux on it and so forth. Uh, I use a buffing machine. You can certainly do it with a little rotary uh, uh, tool and uh, or a little drill bit with a, with a little drill on it. Anything that uh, can spin, you can put a, a Mizzy wheel on it. These right here are Mizzy wheels. And uh, I'll show you what I do first. <laughs> Okay, the next thing we're going to do after we've got our uh, metal all cleaned off and ready to work with, we're going to put what I call Dicom Blue. It's just a uh, machinist stain that you put on your, your metal in order so you can trace lines and see where things are. And, and we're going to do cutting with a jeweler saw. So we need to trace our lines and be able to see them. And by using a uh, Dicom Blue, it makes those lines show up a lot easier. Once that dries, it it's easy to draw a scratch line on it. Now I, I've also got another way to do it, so you don't have to just go out and buy Dicom Blue. I, I do a lot of machine work, so of course I use Dicom Blue, but you could just use a, a Sharpie black one I prefer. You can use blue or red or whatever color you have. And you can just color it in. doesn't work quite as well, but uh, it works well enough that you can see wherever you trace the lines. So, so that step's done next. Now we'll go ahead and try, trace our uh, project and get ready to cut it. Okay, I decided not to mess with taping it or gluing it down, so put my finger right there. This is a surgeon blade with a, a surgeon number 11 uh, knife on it. And it's razor sharp, so you want to be careful not to press hard on it or anything, so you don't want to break the surgeon blade and have it fly in your face. And I'm just carving away. This is uh, the last part, oops, the last part of it. Okay, now we've traced it out, and he's pretty close to the to the original, so it doesn't look like much, does it? And once we start putting in the designs and stuff in here, it really comes alive, and uh, it'll uh, start showing character. I like I said, instead of cutting three pieces here. We're going to try and just do it in one, and then we'll see how we'll shape it with a uh, shaping tool. And uh, I made this shaping tool right here, so and it's not hardened; uh, it's just a soft tool, soft steel. Uh, it could be hardened, but when you're doing a little bit of forming uh, on sterling silver, it really it doesn't need to be really uh, machine hard. So. This will this will this will make an uh, an impression really easy, and if it gets a little dull, you just sharpen it back up. So, and I'll show you how to do that. So we kind of got our our pattern all ready to go now. So the next step will be to uh, saw him out, and uh, I'll show you my technique on doing that. Uh, yes, I break blades all the time. By the way, <laughs> I'll open the drawer. 
I carry them by the hundreds, you know, two or three hundred of them at a time. I think these come in grosses of 144, and I buy 10 packs at a time. So that way I, I have lots of blades on hand, and I have two or three different sizes I like, depending on what I'm going to saw and how thick it is. So that's our, our next project will be sawing. So let me get ready for that, and I'll show you a little bit of how to saw it. Okay, the next step after you uh, trace your pattern is wherever you're going to saw. So we're going to start down here for perhaps, and we'll drill up to the to the uh, neck and the head, and I'll drill a hole right there, just to, just below the line. I don't want to drill into the line, but below it. And then we're going to make a turn this way, so I will drill a hole right here. Then you're going to make a turn around this ear, and I'll make a hole right here. And then I can go ahead and just cut off to here, down or over to here. We'll cut off to here. I'll cut down this way, and then we'll run into a hole, and then another hole, and then we'll just go ahead and finish the tail out. So that will be your uh, your cutout. You don't have to necessarily drill the holes, but uh, if you have a nice little set of drills like mine here. These are really nice drills. They're very expensive, so you want to use them with care. Don't burn them and don't don't drill them too fast. But uh, this is a black. Uh, I think this is a, a Panther drill bits, and uh, you can buy them by the set. By drilling the holes, you know you save your blades a little bit. Uh, trying to make a, a tight turn you know, sometimes you'll pinch that uh, jeweler's blade and you'll snap it and then you'll of course just put a new blade on and keep going but I try to go as far as I can on one blade so by putting these little holes wherever the turns are uh, will reduce the uh, amount of pressure and, and uh, friction you put on your uh, blade so either way whatever is comfortable with you you can just go ahead and saw them all the way out without in, any holes but to me it's a lot easier if you do it that way so next project here would be to cut our little fox out and uh, see what we got so when you get ready to uh, do your saw cuts and we're doing it now don't try and cut straight up and down like this because it's not going to, it'll jab. Well, it started, but it uh, will hang up on you. So, when you're going to find your first line, you just want to come out here this way. That way you have more teeth hitting at the same time. And don't get in a hurry. You just follow your little lines. Don't follow the little lines of our happy little fox. <laughs> Okay, now this is uh, this is some uh, saw relief. You can put a little of that on your blade. I thought what I'd do is I'd show you. I don't particularly use it. I don't like it that well, but I just saw them. But, all right, straight up and down like you at this angle. Now we can just easily spin it. You see what I'm talking about? Ah, look what I did. <laughs> I, I didn't have it tight enough in my hands. Boom. There went a blade. Well, that's all right. We do that every now and then. Even the the best of the best of the best pop their, their blades once in a while. So, And I don't know whether I've got any more out here or not. Doesn't look like it. Guess what? We'll just get into a new pack. This is one gross. These are three aught. So if anybody wants, it's a three aughts. I like three aughts. So we'll get a package out. Now they're they're wrapped with wire. So just break your wire off of there and roll them out. About halfway. There's your. Now, 
we got to make sure we can feel it cutting towards us. Teeth are pointing towards the handle. Let's see if I can. Teeth will point from here to here, and the teeth will come to the back side of the handle. Handle is, let's see if we can come out a little bit. Okay. Take your uh, jeweler's tool, put it against your chest, your breastbone, and you want to push inward. Listen to that. Just right. You want to make them tight. And uh, they won't twist on you quite as bad. And uh, will be easier to saw. So, alright, let's go ahead and give it another try here and see if we can make it through. We're here. We turn this way. I'm just following the lines. Now I can turn him pretty darn easy. Try and stay on your lines. Now you see I, I missed it just a little bit. Now I'm just going to go ahead and go on through. So I really didn't need a hole there, but you get the idea, I'm, I'm sure. Okay. just a little bit you know that doesn't take a lot you can get you'll get the idea if you've never done it if you've done it a million times uh, move on to the you next part in your chingles the underneath of your your uh, project here so let's go ahead and I'll just go ahead and come up here high so that piece will fall down here can you see uh, it's uh, all right, we got that one done. holding on to this. I'm just letting the saw do the work. See how light that is? Now what's happening is it's, it's catching and it's lifting my project and that will break a, a saw blade. But I'm just showing you how light my hand is. I just, I'm just letting the saw do the work. Quit, you know, don't force it. There's our next little piece. Here's our ear. on the tail.
and our project's cut out. A little bit of uh, trimming, a little bit of saw trimming, and we'll we'll uh, be ready for the next part of this. So stay tuned here, and we'll keep going. Let me get ready for the next scene. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a, uh, this is just a rough stone, and uh, I use it for trimming uh, areas that I can get to. It, it heats up fast, so you can only do a little bit at a time. I want this tail to kind of curve in. So I'm just... kind of got a little curve going. Uh, if you don't have a hard stone or a flux modem or a, anything like that, you can just do this with a, with a file. You'll need a round file like this one here. This is a... and you can just work your own like that. You see how we're starting to get a little bit of a curve in there? And we'll take off some of the. So, so far we're doing pretty good here. <laughs> and uh, our little fox is starting to take shape. All I'm doing right now is just getting rid of the lines. Just, I like to leave just a little bit so I can kind of see the pattern back. Oops. So we can use a couple of things. I can use a little diamond cutter or I can uh, oops, use this. This is just a different kind of flex shaft that I have. I sell them, I should know what they are, but they got silicon carbide in them and they uh, these are the gray ones. These are about 99.9% .9 of all I, I use. I just love these things, and I buy them by, like I said, I buy cases of them, and uh, I sell them to almost every jeweler in town. I got a few all over the state. I used to uh, work for a company called Riddles, and I used to be a salesman for them, and uh, I developed a, a nice territory of uh, jeweler and, and uh, contacts so I've always tried to keep in contact with them, most of them and uh, through the years you know I've made some wonderful wonderful friends we'll do a little more trimming here when you're trying to go on the side of a piece. Alright. Well, he's pretty well cut out. And he's pretty well shaped. So... Next step is, is I'll go ahead and clean off the uh, dicom in the uh, the black uh, sharpie, 
and uh, so we have a little bit more of a clear idea of what we're going to do with him. So I'll get that done next, and we'll start on the on the next part of the the lesson. Do now is we're going to start bringing in our shaping tool and start making a few. Uh, areas that uh, will shade and start making our little fox start to look real and so we'll just our ears are going to get a little little place and let's put an eye about right there let's put another eye right about there there's our little nose right there then we'll put a little expression there. And our neckline. And uh, he's got a little hand right here, a little foot. Got another little foot on the other side. Two little feet, and uh, we'll start working on the tail here. Looks about the same. Oh yeah. Put some grass or some hair up there. Steel forming tool is nothing more than a piece of steel rod like this, and uh, this is not tempered. To a, to a hard surface, it's just hard hardware store. Uh, I think this is oil hard. You'd have to check green. I think's water and red's oil. But uh, this is uh, three millimeters, and uh, I I just cut a piece off. So the first thing you want to do is just curvy. So you start from the edge, like this was the edge. You just start right here and start curving him. Then you want to convex the other side so that you have a blade. And you can resharpen him. Now if you're going to use these a lot, then it might might pay to go ahead and temper them hard. Uh, that's a whole different video. I'll have to do one. And uh, then these tools will probably last a lot longer and you won't have to sharpen them quite as often. But you will get, need a, a, a grinding stone to do this with. Alright, that's about good enough, I think. So, I'm using the, this is a concave or a convex cha shaping hammer. Uh, you can buy a flat one, that's what I recommend. I don't, I use this for other things, but, so. We'll go ahead and now I, th this is shaped at a curve. I just took a file and kind of curved it a little bit, so I want the curve to f follow the ear. Oops, dropped him. <laughs> Might be nicer to make that a little longer. So, now we kind of shape that ear. the other side. So 
So all we're doing now is shaping our metal. I use sterling silver. You could use copper if you wanted to. It might look just as pretty in copper as, as any other. And if you like, you could use nickel silver, but it's harder to work with. They call it nickel silver, but it doesn't really have any silver in it that I know of. Alright, let's go ahead and do the easy things. Let's get this uh, neckline put in. Okay, so now I've got a little neck. Kind of a neat little swirly there in her nose. So let's put this foot line in. Another arm in. Now we got a little little hand there. This part is tail, right there. So I guess we could put this other. We'll put a little hair on his chest. We'll clean up a little bit here and we'll get started here with the next we're going to shape that tail just a little bit and then I'll have to kind of draw him out so we'll do that next okay I uh, told you I always kind of like to involve a little bit of soldering with the, the project so that you do forming and sawing and filing and shaping and designing and that is the makings of a, a good amateur jeweler and, and a professional so what we're going to do now is uh, we don't have a tail coming behind his body we want a tail that just kind of swirls around and comes out here like that so we don't have any pail there so we're going to put one there so you cut a little piece of uh, silver off your your uh, stock See that? And then I just dipped it a little bit, made a little round portion of it. And we're going to solder that for fun right there. And that will make the, the, the little fox complete with a, with a tail. He just needs a little bushy tail in the end there, just like that. So we're going to use paste solder like this. I generally do not use chip solder. Uh, it's harder to get to flow. And I just use, they, they make a, a couple of different grades of this, by the way. They make hard and then I think medium and, and soft. I'll have to check. I just carry a hard, but yeah, we're going to slide him right in there just like that. And we're going to solder him. Then we can finish shaping him. And Shouldn't need much heat. Working clear out here. See where I'm at? Clear out here, bring the tip in. I want to get that little piece hot so that my solder flows from the body out to the tail. There's a pair of uh, pliers like this right here. Oh, you can't see that here. Right here, these are bending pliers, or you make round, half round shapes with it. And uh, this is a pretty good sized one. You could use your mandrel if you have a steel mandrel and kind of shape it around. Uh, it doesn't, uh, there's a lot of ways you can do it, just a little bit of imagination. Anything that's got a, 
a hard surface that's round you can kind of start shaping your little critter and give them a little body a little little so it looks a little dimensional and uh, the last step here would be to uh, color him in with some uh, blackout and uh, polish him up a little bit and I kind of like the frosted look I don't know about the rest of you but I think they look better when they're not all highly polished because like I said they show so much scratching silver does and then if you don't have plating and I do have plating but uh, I have a plating equipment set in the back room but ah, uh, we're not going to do that we're going to just make this easy so alrighty so let me get this thing cooled down a little bit and uh, we'll see if we can buff him up a little and give him the next stage. I'm going to push hard. We just want a little, little bit, bit of bend the bail on. around the face here. And I'm doing it from the back side. Now you can see he's got a little bit of a, little, a nice little bend to him. So let's bend the tail. And we'll stick them right down the middle of the body and just give them a little bit of a push. And bend him a little too much. You don't need much. You just need a little bit to give them some dimension look. And I think that'll do it. So... I'm going to put him back on the Mizzy wheel for just a second. I, I like this brushed look on this one. So we're going to leave that alone and not polish it. Okay, I just took a piece of uh, uh, Starlight wire, silver wire. It's, it's uh, still sterling. And uh, what I did is I uh, made a half hook around it. And I just... I'm going to make it flat so that when I lay it on the uh, back of the uh, fox, it makes our pendant. And I want it to set nice and straight, so that's all I did. And now you can see it. That'll let a pretty good sized chain through there. Starloom. Star, starloom. Starlunium. Sterling silver. It has a chemical alloy mixed in it, and it helps to keep it from tarnishing. Now this is good and bad, but if you because if you want a piece to tarnish and you want to use the liver of oxide, this won't it won't tarnish quite as fast. You'll have to fight with it because it does have that agent in it. It's made by a company called PM Manufacturing and Refining, and you have to buy quite a lot of it in order to uh, get them to ship to you. So we try to carry it and uh, in stock in a couple three different sizes. You see me <clears throat> solder that, so now we're going to solder it. We put, uh, I'm just going to pick it up. I put a little dab of liquid solder or solder, silver solder paste, <laughs> liquid solder. I don't know where my mind works. Sometimes it just says silly things. So it's uh, paste solder, sterling silver. I buy it by the three penny weight. It goes quite a ways. Uh, if you like chip solder, that's that's fine too. I just think this melts easier and works a little easier. And let's see. We're going to need quite a bit of heat for this, I think. Shut that light off.
Didn't do very well, did I? Okay, let's get another blob down here. Probably should have pickled this uh, with uh, boric acid. Would have helped a little bit. Uh, Okay, pretty much have him done. All so right. what's remaining here is we want to do a little bit of blackout. So we'll just black in the the eyes, and we'll try and get a little in the lip area. You might have to apply this on there twice. There we go. That's done. We'll let that set for a few seconds and wipe him off and all right, let me go get my uh, brush washed out and we'll take a look at him. Okay, <clears throat> he's been uh, blackened in. You could also do this with a uh, liver of sulfur. Uh, I just use a, a blackout and black them in here, all the little forming areas that I, I made. We could probably make the forming tool a little sharper and dig these in a little deeper, and I might do that. Probably give this to my niece. Uh, she likes getting new jewelry. <laughs> so. Uh, we'll put a silver chain on that and it'll be a, a nice little gift. Uh, now here's the back side. I just kind of rough ground it clean. Uh, a, lot of a lot of people believe in m making them perfectly shiny, but I, uh, up, up to the individual, I guess. I, I just clean them up and that's that. So... Unless it's something that has to be shown on both sides. You know, here we made this, this here, uh, Deathly Hollow pendant. And, uh, that I polished on both sides, but here we, uh, here we go. Now the chain's been rhodium plated, that's why it stays so, so perfectly silvery. <clears throat> so, there we go. Easy does it. Okay, uh, a couple things. Uh, when I built this first one, let's see if we can get them both in there. I built the first one in three pieces, and that didn't work out well. I didn't like the way it come out that way. So what I did do is I lowered the tail because I wanted that tail not quite so bushy. And I'm not sure. Maybe I should have left, left him a little more bushy. But uh, we could use. Uh, we could. We, I might. You know. Eventually, come back and do another one of these, or uh, steal this back from my niece, or my granddaughter. I mean, <laughs> and uh, do some uh, engraving on it with uh, engraver tools. That might be another show. You can see where I have more of an outline right here where the body is, and this one doesn't show quite as nice. Uh, 
this one was a little bit easier to uh, cut out and make than this one was. Uh, I don't know, it's uh, up to the individual. You can make all three different pieces, as you can see if you watch the first video. And uh, it, it shows you three, uh, three pieces, and now you see it done. So it, it does have a little more character, and I, I, I would have uh, done the eyes a little different. I made two gold eyes and put them in there. Probably should have made a gold nose, too. Uh, you see here, I, I just used black out and made the, uh, the eyes black and the nose black. So... Uh, about uh, 45 minutes to make these, uh, but I, I think they're a lot of fun. So, and we soldered uh, on the back. We soldered this piece here, and then we soldered. You notice you won't see that solder mark there. That uh, paste solder works really nice for that. And then we soldered this. Now, when I brought that torch in, uh, you need to go back and watch that. I first of all, I, I figured out where this had to set. And I put a little dab of solder there, a little solder there, and I and I melted that first. That got this whole piece hot. Then I dropped this back on there with a little dab of solder on both ends of this. And then I brought that torch up this way. And uh, I brought that torch in and I worked it clear over here, clear over here, clear over here. If you watch, you'll see how I did that. Then I got in here, to, when I started to see this start to turn red, I know it's going to melt within a, a split second. So you back off of it and come back right in here, and both of these soldered in or melted right at the same time. And that's how you do that. And it takes a little practice to do that. Or you could have set it up here and then heated it from the bottom side until it, until it melted too. Might have been an easier way for somebody to do it, but I just brought the torch right in here and did it. So. Well, thanks for watching this, this video. I hope you enjoyed it. There's a lot of lessons in there that we learned. And uh, maybe the next one I will go ahead and make another body. And, uh, but I'll, I'll make every part out of the same size instead of trying to make it smaller. So, anyway, thanks again for, uh, for watching the videos. I hope you enjoy them. Uh, I plan on making a couple more here in the next day or two when I get a little time. And uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do next, but we'll, we'll do, do something that's you know, intermediate, you know, a scale of 1 to 10, probably a scale of 1 or 2, just so you get used to how I do things. So, with that, I'll say goodnight.